When you build a quiz and articulate storyline, sometimes it makes sense to help your learners see how they're doing on that quiz as they move through the questions, especially if the quiz is really long, because that way they don't have to wait till the end when they get to the result slide to see how they've performed. And this came up recently in the eLearning Heroes forums. A storyline user wanted to add a little bit of information to each of her question slides. She wanted to show how many questions the learner had gotten right and how many questions they had completed so far. So here's one way that you can do that. I've got this little sample file here with just three questions and a result slide at the end. And what I did first is I created two variables. If we click on this little X here, it's going to open up our list of project variables. And the ones that I created are called number answered. That's going to keep track of how many questions the learner answers in total. And I also created a variable called number correct. And I use that to keep track of how many right answers the learner submitted. You can see that they're both number variables and I set the value of both of them to zero initially. And the place where I adjust those variables as the learner completes the quiz is actually on my slide masters. Now I could have gone through and you know created a bunch of triggers on the slides themselves to adjust the variables, but it's a lot quicker to do it on the slide masters because then you can manage it all in one place. So let's take a look at that. Up here on the View tab, you can click Feedback Master, and this is going to show you all the different feedback layouts that are used for the feedback layers in your course. And if you hover over any of them, it's going to show you what they're used for. So here's the one that's used for correct feedback. I'm going to go to that one. And here I've created a couple of triggers. One of the triggers is telling Storyline to adjust the variable that I called number correct by adding a value of 1 when the timeline of this layout starts. So basically what we're saying is any time a user sees the correct feedback on a question, we want to add a value of 1 to our tally of correct answers. Because if they see this layout, it means they got the question right because they're seeing correct feedback. And then I did a similar thing here for the second trigger. This one adjusts the variable called number answered. This is just our tally of how many questions the learner has answered in total. We're adjusting that by a value of 1 as well. So pretty simple. And then I did a similar thing on the incorrect feedback layout. The only difference here is that I only used one of those triggers. I only told Storyline adjust the variable called number answered by a value of 1. Because on the incorrect feedback layout, obviously if they see that, that means they got the question wrong. So we don't want to add 1 to our tally of correct answers. So that's why we only have one trigger on the incorrect feedback layout. So this is how we keep track of the count. And now we just need to show the count to the learner, and we can do that on a Slide Master as well. So up here on the View tab, if we switch over to Slide Master, we'll find our layout that's used for questions, which is this one right here. And what I did is I just added a text box on this layout, and I typed in number correct with a colon. And then this business that you see here with the percent signs, this is just a reference to those variables that I created earlier. And you can insert one by coming up to the Insert tab, and then click Reference, choose the variable whose value you want to display, and then click OK. And then it inserts it for you with the correct name and the percent signs around it. Now, of course, when you preview or publish, these percent signs aren't going to show up like this. It's actually going to show the real value of the variable. And then you can see that I did a similar thing here for the number answered. And in fact, if we close this master view and go to any of our slides, it's going to show up on all of the slides that use that layout. So let's go ahead and preview this and see how it looks. We've only got three questions on this slide, so it'll go pretty fast. Here's our first one, and our tally up here is showing correctly. We'll answer this one correct, and our tally changes. So you can see we got one right out of one. Here's our second question, and let's get this one wrong and see what happens. And the tally changes again, so now we only got one right out of two. And now our third question, we'll get this one right, and we got two right out of three. So it's behaving just like we um, would expect. Um, now one more thing you'll want to do is if your results slide includes a retry quiz button like this one does, you'll also need to reset your variable values back to zero if the learner clicks on that. Otherwise the value is just going to keep on building if the learner retries the quiz and that wouldn't be good. So let's see how we do that. On the results slide if you select retry quiz um, you can create a trigger over here in the trigger panel to set the number answered and the number correct equal to zero if the learner clicks on that button. And when you do that, you'll want to place these triggers right before the jump to variable that gets created automatically. That's really important. So that way, the count will be correct even if the learner does retry your quiz, and the learner will get to see the tallies throughout the entire quiz as they complete.